in conclusion of our discussion on the membrane analysis of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading based on the membrane theory of thin shells the membrane solution that is the solution of the unknown internal in plane or membrane actions in an axisymmetrically loaded thin cylindrical shell based on the considerations of statical equilibrium kinematics or compatibility of displacements as well as the constitutive stress strain relationships or the constitutive material laws may be summarized by equations 1 2 3 and 4 presented in the current slide it is worthwhile to note here that the membrane solution as summarized by equations 1 2 3 and 4 in the present slide has been obtained or formulated by the application of the simplifying assumptions of thin shells that is the assumption number 1 as well as the simplifying assumption number 2 of axisymmetric loading acting on an axisymmetric structures such as a cylindrical shell thus resulting in axisymmetric conditions or axisymmetry of the in plane or membrane actions further as discussed earlier the membrane solution for axisymmetrically loaded thin cylindrical shells as summarized by equations 1 2 3 and 4 presents two unknown constants of integration that is c not and seva thus resulting in a statically indeterminate membrane solution even after the application of the two simplifying assumptions of thin shells and axisymmetry on the basis of the statical equilibrium equations the kinematics or compatibility of displacements and the constitutive stress strain relationships or the constitutive material laws as discussed earlier the unknown constants of integration c0 and c1 are to be determined from the boundary conditions that are compatible with the end restraints specified for the specific practical examples of axisymmetrically loaded thin cylindrical shells and in general these boundary conditions can be either force boundary conditions in which and a force is specified 
as the boundary condition or displacement boundary condition in which a displacement is specified as the boundary condition that is compatible with the end restraints specified for the particular or specific practical examples that are considered for the membrane analysis. In order to solve for the unknown constants of integration C0 and C1 by specifying boundary conditions that are compatible with the end restraints specified for the particular practical examples of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading, we will consider two practical examples for the solution of the unknown constants of integration C0 and C1 in order to complete the membrane solution summarized by equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 for thin shells subjected to axisymmetric loading in general. And the two practical examples that will be considered in the scope of the present course will be one, a cylindrical pressure vessel with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to a uniform internal pressure, say P0 due to the gas pressure that is confined by the cylindrical pressure vessel where the cylindrical flush pressure vessel with a thin cylindrical shell is provided with thick liners at both ends that is at the top end x equal to 0 and the bottom end x equal to L. It may be noted here that the uniform internal pressure P0 due to the gas pressure that is confined by the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel considered as the first practical example of a thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading constitutes an axisymmetric external load PR that is an axisymmetric external load acting in the radial direction PR on the thin cylindrical shell due to the uniform internal gas pressure P0. The second practical example that will be considered to illustrate the solution of the unknown constants of integration C0 and C1 that are yet to be determined in order to complete the membrane solution for a thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading as presented by equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 
will be a cylindrical water tank with the thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic pressure due to the stored water that constitutes a external radial load PR due to the hydrostatic loading exerted by the stored water or for that matter any liquid in the cylindrical tank with a thin cylindrical shell it is worthwhile to note here that the hydrostatic pressure due to the stored liquid in the cylindrical storage tank considered as the second example in the present course is an axisymmetric load since the hydrostatic pressure due to the stored liquid in the cylindrical storage tank with the thin cylindrical shell acts axisymmetrically that is symmetrically with respect to the longitudinal x axis of the cylindrical shell structure. Further, the practical example of the cylindrical water tank with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to the axisymmetric hydrostatic loading is specified or given to have a light roof cover at the top end and a thick base slab at the base or the bottom end of the cylindrical shell structure, thus defining the boundary conditions of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical water tank or the cylindrical storage tank in general as free end conditions on the top that is at the boundary x equal to 0 and fixed boundary conditions at the base that is the boundary x equal to L in order to specify boundary conditions that are compatible with the given end restraints that is a light roof cover at the top and a thick base slab at the bottom of the cylindrical water tank. Moreover, since the boundary conditions that will be specified for the solution of the unknown constants of integration C0 and C1 in order to complete the membrane solution for axisymmetrically loaded thin cylindrical shells are 
specified or to be specified to be compatible with the given end restraints of the specific practical example for example the cylindrical pressure vessel with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to uniform internal pressure P0 and provided with thick liners at the both top and bottom end and the cylindrical water tank with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic pressure provided with light roof cover at the top and a thick base slab at the bottom end. The exercise or the problem of determining the unknown constants of integration C0 and C1 in order to complete the membrane solution for the given axisymmetrically loaded thin cylindrical shell in the particular or specific practical example is therefore a boundary value problem wherein the boundary condition that is to be applied for the solution of the unknown constants of integration C0 and C1 may be force or displacement boundary conditions that are compatible with the end restraints given for the particular practical examples. For instance, the cylindrical pressure vessel or the cylindrical water tank, both with thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading. In addition, the practical examples, that is example number one of the cylindrical pressure vessel subjected to a uniform internal pressure P0 due to the internal gas pressure and the second example of cylindrical water tank with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic pressure will be considered as solved examples for illustrating the methodology of the membrane solution of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading based on membrane theory as well as the complete solution of the thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading in the two practical examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank. It may be noted here that the solved examples, that is the practical example number one of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading consisting of the 
cylindrical pressure vessel and the salt example number two consisting of a cylindrical water tank both with thin cylindrical shells subjected to axismetric loading will serve as illustrative examples to illustrate or demonstrate the methodology of solution for assignments number 3A and 3B respectively. In fact, the methodology of the membrane analysis and therefore the membrane solution of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axismetric loading with a reference to the salt example 1 and salt example 2 is almost similar to the methodology of the solution to assignments number 3A and 3B respectively. In addition, the complete solution for the practical examples or the solid examples 1 and 2 considered in the present discussion will also serve as illustrative examples to illustrate or demonstrate the complete solution of the internal actions in the two practical cases or practical examples that are considered in assignments number 3A that's based on cylindrical pressure vessel and assignment number 3B that is based on a cylindrical water tank both of which practical examples are provided with a thin shell and are subjected to axisymmetric loading for reasons just mentioned. Proceeding to the solved examples, that is, the practical examples illustrating the methodology of the membrane solution as well as the complete solution of the internal actions in thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading as mentioned in the previous slide we will be considering two solved examples based on the membrane solution presented in the previous slide summarized by equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 formulated on the basis of the membrane theory of thin shells in order to illustrate the application of the membrane solutions that is equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 summarizing the 
memory solution as presented in the previous slide and the two solved examples or practical examples of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading that will be considered for discussion in the present course in order to illustrate and demonstrate the methodology of the membrane solution and the complete solution of the unknown internal actions in thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading will be one a cylindrical pressure vessel with a thin shell and thick liners as mentioned in the previous slide that can be mathematically or physically idealized as rigid diaphragms provided at both ends that is the top and bottom end with the thin cylindrical shell that is subjected to a uniform internal pressure P0 an example of axisymmetric loading and two a cylindrical water tank with a thin cylindrical shell that is provided with a light roof cover at the top and a thick base slab at the bottom of the base thus constituting fixed free end conditions with the thin cylindrical shells subjected to hydrostatic pressure due to the stored water or any other liquid for that matter an example of hydrostatic or axisymmetric loading acting on the thin cylindrical shell two solved examples one and two that will be considered in the present discussion in order to illustrate and demonstrate the methodology of solution of the internal actions in thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading will also serve as illustrative examples as mentioned earlier that will illustrate and demonstrate the methodology of solution to assignments number 3a and 3b it may be noted here that the methodology of solution that is presented in the current slide for the membrane solution of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading in case of the two practical examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank is almost similar to the methodology of solution of assignments number 3a and 3b respectively and the two solved examples which are the representative practical examples of 
thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading will be discussed simultaneously or concurrently from this point onwards with the sequence or the formulations of the solution presented in a tabular format as presented in the present current slide wherein the left hand side of the table presents the methodology of the membrane solution and subsequently the complete solution of the internal actions in a cylindrical pressure vessel while the table on the right hand side presents the methodology of the membrane solution and subsequently the complete solution of the internal actions in a cylindrical water tank, both of which are practical examples of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading. It is worthwhile to mention here that the formulations for the membrane solution and the complete solution of the internal actions in the two solved examples, that is solved example number one, considering the practical example of a thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading in the form of a cylindrical pressure vessel and solid example number two also an instance of a thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading in the form of a cylindrical water tank will be derived or solved simultaneously or concurrently with the left hand side of the table presented in the current and the succeeding slides providing the formulations of the solution for a cylindrical pressure vessel and the right hand side of the table presented in the current and subsequent slides presenting the solution for a cylindrical water tank. Hence, commencing with the exercise of deriving the membrane solution for the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading in case of the two practical examples or practical cases of the thin of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank applying the 
specific mathematical formulations for the external loading in the two cases in order to solve for the unknown constants of integration C0 and C1 for completing the membrane solution summarized by equations 1 to 4 presented in the previous slide the external loading in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel consists of uh, an external radial load PR that is equal to a uniform internal pressure P naught and an external axial or longitudinal load Px that is I assumed or idealized to be zero in case the self weight of the shell is neglected otherwise if the self weight of the shell is not negligible or can is not neglected or ignored then the external axial load or the external longitudinal load px acting on the thin cylindrical shell will be equal to the unit weight of the shell material comma s times the thickness t of the shell In case of the cylindrical water tank, that is the second solved example, the external loading can be mathematically represented as the external radial load given by the hydrostatic pressure since the external load is specified or defined per unit area and therefore the external radial load acting on the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tap is simply equal to the hydrostatic pressure at the depth x from the top of the cylindrical water tank or the thin cylindrical shell which may be calculated as the unit weight of water times the coordinate x which is the depth of the location at which the external radial load PR is calculated or the depth at which the hydrostatic pressure due to the stored water acts as in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel the external axial or external longitudinal load Px can be idealized or considered to be zero in case the self weight of the shell is neglected However, in case that is in the other case where the self weight of the thin cylindrical shell cannot be neglected or is to be considered the external longitudinal or external axial load Px will be given by the unit weight of the shell material comma s times the thickness t of the thin cylindrical shell where the unit weight of the shell material in case of concrete will be comma s equal to 
25 kN per meter cube, for example. Therefore, depending on whether the sulfate of the thin cylindrical shell is negligible, uh, can be neglected or ignored, the external axial or longitudinal load Px in case of both the practical examples, one of cylindrical pressure vessel and two of the cylindrical water tank. may be taken as zero in case the external, in case the sulfate of the shell is negligible or neglected. Otherwise, the external axial or longitudinal load Px will be specified as the unit weight of the shell material gamma s times the thickness of the shell in case the sulfate of the shell is to be considered Substituting the mathematical formulations representing the external loading just discussed into equations 1, 2, 3, we obtain the specific mathematical relationships for the unknown internal in-plane or membrane actions, that is, the unknown internal in-plane or membrane actual force Nx in terms of the constants of integration C0 as well as the unknown internal in plane or membrane action n theta that is the internal unknown in plane or membrane circumferential or tangential force n theta in terms of the external loading as depicted by equations Roman numerals 2 and 3. Further, substituting from equations numbered Roman numerals 2 and 3 in case of both the solved examples into equation number 3 of the membrane solution summarized in the previous slide, we obtain a relationship for the unknown internal in plane or membrane axial or longitudinal displacement u as a function of the coordinate x as depicted by equation number Roman numeral 4 for both the solved examples. In case of the solid example number one, that is the cylindrical pressure vessel, the substitution of the mathematical representations of the external loading into the 
equations one, two, three, and four, and rearrangement of terms, and simplification results in the simplification of the mathematical formulation for the unknown internal in plane or radial displacement W in terms of the constant of integration C naught. In general, the substitution of the mathematical formulations for the external loads in case of the solved examples 1 and 2 into equations 1, 2, 3, and 4 summarizing the membrane solution for thin cylindrical shells subjected to axismetric loading result in simplified or specific mathematical relationships for the unknown internal in plane or membrane axial force in X, the unknown internal in plane or membrane circumferential or tangential force in theta, the unknown internal membrane or in plane axial displacement or axial longitudinal displacement U and the unknown radial displacement W for each of the two solved examples considered in the present discussion as well as assignments number 3A and 3B in terms of the unknown constants of integration C0 and C1. Continuing with the membrane solution for the two practical examples of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading that is practical example number one based on the pressure vessel that is a cylindrical pressure vessel or a boiler as an instance of practical implementation in the industry and two a cylindrical water tank both of which are provided with thin cylindrical shells and are subjected to axisymmetric loading. The solution of the unknown internal in-plane or membrane actions, that is the membrane solution for the thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading in case of the two solved examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank may be completed by substituting or applying the boundary conditions that are 
consistent with the specified end restraints in case of the two practical examples considered as solved examples for the membrane solution of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading. And a set of end conditions or boundary conditions that may be force or displacement boundary conditions at the boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell that are compatible with the given or specified end restraints of the thin cylindrical shell in case of either practical or solid example may be substituted or incorporated in the simplified mathematical formulations for the unknown in-plane or membrane actions that is the unknown in-plane or membrane actual force Nx uh, unknown in-plane or membrane tangential or circumferential force N theta and the unknown in-plane or membrane displacement Ux in the actual the longitudinal direction X as well as the unknown radial displacement W hence proceeding with the substitution of the boundary conditions into the equations numbered Roman numerals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 derived in the previous slide a set of boundary conditions that is compatible with the given end restraints for the cylindrical pressure vessel is comprising of the longitudinal or actual displacement u equal to zero at the boundary x equal to zero due to the fixed and boundary conditions on account of the thick or rigid liners provided at the ends of the cylindrical pressure vessel. Similarly, in case of the second solved example, that is the practical example of cylindrical water tank with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic pressure, a set of boundary conditions that is compatible with the specified end restraints specified for the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tank is the force boundary condition that is the in-plane 
on membrane axial force nx at the boundary x equal to 0 is equal to 0 at the top end or the free end of the cylindrical water tank due to the light roof cover provided at the top end of the cylindrical water tank. The other boundary condition which is a displacement boundary condition that is consistent or compatible with the specified end restraints for the second solid example is that the longitudinal axial displacement u at the boundary x equal to l that is at the base of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical water tank is equal to zero on account of the rigid place slab that constitutes a fixed end condition at the boundary x equal to l that is the base or the bottom end of the cylindrical water tank. In case of the first practical example, that is solid example number one of the cylindrical pressure vessel, the second boundary condition, which is a displacement boundary condition that is compatible with the specified or given end restraint for the thin cylindrical shell in the practical example of the cylindrical pressure vessel is that the radial displacement tableau at the boundary x equal to 0, that is the top end should be equal to 0 on account of the thick or rigid liner that is provided at the top boundary that is x equal to 0. as well as the bottom boundary that is x equal to L. Hence, substituting the boundary conditions that are compatible with the specified end restraints for the two practical examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank considered as sort examples. For illustrating the solution of the internal actions in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank considered in assignments number 3a and 3b the simplified mathematical formulations for the unknown internal in-plane or membrane actions and X 
and the unknown internal in plane or membrane displacement u as well as the unknown radial displacement w in case of the two practical examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and cylindrical water tank considered as solid examples in the present study may be obtained as the equations circumscribed by the green rectangles it is worthwhile to mention here that these simplified equations have been derived mathematically from the membrane solution summarized by equations 1 2 3 and 4 uh, presented in one of the earlier slides on the application or substitution of the specified or given external loading acting on the thin cylindrical shell in case of the two practical solved examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank as well as the substitution of a set of boundary conditions or end conditions which in general may be force or displacement boundary conditions that are specified at the boundaries of the thin cylindrical shells in the two examples and are compatible with the given end restraints of the two practical examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank as discussed in the previous slide before proceeding to the complete solution of the unknown internal actions in the two practical examples considered for discussion in the present course that is the solved example of a cylindrical pressure vessel with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to a uniform internal gas pressure p not and two a cylindrical water tank with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic pressure both of which are commonly encountered or extensively implemented practical examples of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading let us reflect 
on the physical interpretations of the membrane solution, that is the solution of the unknown internal in-plane or membrane actions in the thin cylindrical shells of the two practical examples considered in the present discussion or illustrating the methodology of membrane analysis of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading. Well, the mathematical solution of the in-plane or membrane actions termed as the membrane solution for the thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading in case of the two solved examples is summarized by equations one to ten in Roman numerals as presented in the previous two slides based on the substitution of boundary conditions that are compatible with the end restraints that are specified or given for the two practical examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank. The membrane solution, that is the solution of the unknown internal in-plane or membrane actions, derived or formulated for the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading in case of the two solved examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank for the boundary conditions that are specified or given for the two solved examples, one and two are summarized by equations one to eleven in Roman numerals that are presented in the previous slide and the mathematical formulations for the membrane solution, that is the solution of the unknown internal in-plane actions in case of the two solved examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank offer some interesting physical interpretations in terms of the physical behavior of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading in the two practical examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank. It is worthwhile to interpret or visualize the physical meaning of the membrane solution that is the physical interpretation of the membrane solution for the two solved examples since physical behavior or physics is 
as important as the mathematical formulation or the analytical formulations that is the mathematics of the solution and the physical significance or the physical relevance of the memory solution obtained thus far as summarized by equations 1 to 11 in Roman numerals presented in the previous slide for the two solved examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank obtained from the substitution of boundary conditions that are compatible with the specified end restraints given for the two practical examples are summarized in a tabular format for both the practical solved examples. The left hand side of the table presents the physical interpretations or the interpretations of the physical meaning of the membrane solution derived thus far for the cylindrical pressure vessel while the right hand side of the table presents the interpretations of the physical meaning or the physical significance of the membrane solution obtained for the solved or practical example of the cylindrical water tank. And the physical interpretations of the membrane solution for the two solved examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank may be summarized as follows by points A and B that are presented for the respective solved examples in the present slide. Equation Roman numeral 10 as presented and derived in the previous slide provides the membrane solution for the longitudinal or actual membrane displacement Ux which intuitively is mathematically admissible as all the mathematical equations 5 to 11 that have been employed to arrive at equation number 10 all of which are numbered in Roman numerals are based on admissible boundary conditions that is boundary conditions that are compatible with the specified or given end restraints for the cylindrical pressure vessel which comprises of the thick liners provided at both ends of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel. However, the membrane solution for the longitudinal actual displacement U at any coordinate x given by equation number 10 in Roman numerals is physically infeasible. In other words, 
even though the membrane solution for the longitudinal or axial displacement u is a function of x derived as equation number 10 in Roman numeral is mathematically admissible the membrane solution given by equation number 10 in Roman numerals intuitively appears to be physically infeasible because substitution of x equal to L in equation number 10 in Roman numerals, that is the other boundary of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel results in a value of the in-plane longitudinal axial displacement u at the other boundary of the thin cylindrical shell, that is the boundary x equal to L, as equal to a non-zero or a finite value given as a divided by et times p naught times a function of the Poisson's ratio, which obviously is a non-zero or finite value, and a non-zero or finite value of the longitudinal or axial displacement ux at the other boundary that is the boundary x equal to L defined by the plane x equal to L where x is the longitudinal or axial coordinate of the boundary in the selected choice of the cylindrical coordinate system. And the non-zero or finite value of the longitudinal or axial displacement at the boundary x equal to L of the thin cylindrical shell violates the specified end restraint and the resulting boundary condition that is imposed by the thick liner since the thick liner at the other boundary, that is the boundary x equal to L, would impose an end restraint that will require the mathematical boundary condition for the longitudinal or axial displacement u at x equal to l to be zero, which is obviously violated by the membrane solution for the longitudinal axial displacement u x derived as equation number 10 in Roman numeral. In case of the second salt example, that is the cylindrical water tank with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic pressure and thus axisymmetric loading,
based on the membrane solution obtained from the substitution of the mathematical boundary conditions that are compatible with the specified or given end restraints of the cylindrical water tag that is a light roof cover at the top thus resulting in a free end at the top and a thick base slab at the base or the bottom thus constituting fixed end conditions at the base of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical water tank All the equations that summarize the membrane solution and are highlighted in the previous slide by circumscribing or circumscribed by green rectangles are mathematically admissible not only in case of the cylindrical water tank but in the solved examples in general since these equations are derived from mathematically admissible or valid boundary conditions that are compatible with the specified end restraints of the respective practical example of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading however in case of the cylindrical water tag the membrane solution for the radial displacement w any coordinate x results in a non zero value or a finite value of the radial displacement w at the boundary x equal to l obtained by substituting the x coordinate of the boundary that is x equal to l in equation number 11 in roman numerals that was derived as the membrane solution for the radial displacement w at any general coordinate x hence the physical interpretation of the membrane solution for the radial displacement w at any longitudinal or axial coordinate x as given by equation number 11 in roman numerals derived in the previous slide is intuitively physically infeasible at the boundary that is the other boundary defined by x equal to l since the substitution of the coordinate x equal to l for the other boundary in the mathematical formulation for the membrane solution of the radial displacement derived as equation number 11 in roman numerals results in a 
non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement at the other boundary x equal to L, which is equal to comma w times a square times L divided by et, which obviously is a non-zero or a finite value. And the non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement w at the other boundary x equal to L, that is the base of the thin cylindrical shell in the case of the cylindrical water tank, as given by the equation number 11 in Roman numerals for the membrane solution of the radial displacement W as a function of X while it's the specified end restraint that is imposed by the thick base slab at the base of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical water tank. In other words, the non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement W at the boundary x equal to L as given by equation number 11 derived in the previous slide as the membrane solution of the radial displacement W at any general coordinate x while it's the mathematical boundary condition that is compatible with the specified or given end restraint due to the thick base slab that is provided at the base or the bottom of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical water tank and is defined by the plane x equal to L. Continuing our discussion on the membrane solution, that is the solution of the unknown in-plane or membrane actions, in the two practical examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel with thick liners at the two ends and the cylindrical water tank with a light roof cover at the top end and a thick base slab at the bottom end, each of which is provided with a thin shell subjected to axisymmetric loading. Based on the physical interpretations of the membrane solution obtained for the two practical examples considered as solved examples in the present discussion, the membrane solution derived in the previous two slides for the two solved examples as summarized by equations 1 to 11 in Roman numerals presented in the previous slide lead to some fundamental conclusions and the conclusions that are conceptually based on the physical interpretations of the membrane solution derived in the 
previous two slides as represented by the mathematical formulations or equations 1 to 11 in Roman numerals may be stated as follows. 1. It can be concluded from the physical interpretation of the membrane solution for the two practical or solid examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel with a thin cylindrical shell and the cylindrical water tank also with a thin cylindrical shell both of which are subjected to axisymmetric loading that equations 1 to 4 summarizing the membrane solution for such cylindrical shell structures with a thin shell subjected to axisymmetric loading have two unknown constants of integration which are C0 and C1 as displayed by equations 1 to 4 in one of the earlier slides summarizing the membrane solution for thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading. The unknown constants of integration C0 and C1 which are to be determined from mathematically valid or mathematically admissible boundary conditions upon the, their determination should result in the membrane solution for the two practical examples or the solid examples considered in the present discussion for thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading. It may be noted here that mathematically admissible or mathematically valid boundary conditions abbreviated as BC are boundary conditions that are both statically and kinematically admissible and therefore consistent with the physical end restraints that are specified or given for the specific practical example of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading. For example, in case of the solved example comprising of the cylindrical pressure vessel with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to a uniform internal gas pressure that constitutes axisymmetric loading, the physical end restraints that are specified or given consist of the two end liners, that is the two thick liners at the two ends of the cylindrical pressure vessel. In case of the cylindrical water tank, with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic pressure that constitutes the hydrostatic or axisymmetric loading, the physical end restraints that are specified or given are consisting of the light roof cover at the top of the cylindrical water tank 
and the thick base slab at the base or the bottom end of the cylindrical water tank which constitute the boundary conditions or rather define the mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions which have consisted or statically and kinematically admissible in agreement with the end restraints that are provided in practice for the cylindrical shell. The second conclusion that can be derived based on the physical interpretations of the membrane solution obtained in the previous two slides as summarized by equations 1 to 11 in Roman numerals for the two practical or solved examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank is that the shell has two boundaries that is the boundary mathematically represented by the plane x equal to 0 and the boundary represented mathematically by the plane x equal to L. And since the thin cylindrical shell in any practical instance of a cylindrical shell structure with a thin cylindrical shell has two boundaries represented by the planes x equal to 0 and x equal to L in general, there are a total of six physical quantities that are the in-plane or membrane axial force Nx at the boundary x equal to 0, the in-plane or membrane axial or longitudinal displacement u at the boundary x equal to 0, the radial displacement w at the boundary x equal to 0, and the in-plane or membrane axial force nx at the other boundary x equal to l, the in-plane or membrane axial or longitudinal displacement u at the other boundary x equal to l and the radial displacement w at the other boundary x equal to l. That can be prescribed as mathematically admissible boundary conditions which are consistent with the specified or given and restraints that are provided for the practical example of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading. It is worthwhile to note here that mathematically admissible boundary conditions are defined as boundary conditions that are statically and kinematically valid or admissible. And are consistent with the specified or given end restraints provided for the practical example of the 
thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading. In other words, a mathematical boundary condition that is prescribed for determining the membrane solution of a thin cylindrical shell at either or any of the two boundaries of the shell is mathematically valid or admissible if and only if the boundary condition does not violate the specified end restraint or the given end constraint that is provided for the practical example of the thin cylindrical shell. And hence, the mathematical boundary condition is consistent with the physical end restraint that is provided for the thin cylindrical shell in the practical example of the cylindrical shell structure that is in under consideration. For example, in case of the practical or solid example of the cylindrical pressure vessel, the physical end restraints that are provided in the practical example are the two thick liners that are provided at the two ends or the two boundaries of the cylindrical shell, whereas in case of the second practical example or solid example, that is the cylindrical, cylindrical water tank, the physical end restraints that are specified or provided for the practical example of the cylindrical water tank are the light roof cover at the top of the cylindrical water tank and the thick base slab at the base or the bottom of the cylindrical water tank which define the physical end restraints and therefore the mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions at the two boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell x equal to 0 and x equal to L respectively in case of the solved example of the cylindrical water tank. Further, since the number of admissible boundary conditions, that is six numbers, of mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions which can be prescribed for a thin cylindrical shell that is the six physical quantities just enumerated consisting of the in-plane or membrane axial force Nx, the in-plane or membrane axial or longitudinal displacement U and the radial displacement W at the boundary X equal to zero and the same physical 
quantities or the variables that is the in plane or membrane axial force nx and the in plane or membrane axial or longitudinal displacement u and the radial displacement w at the other boundary x equal to l of the shell thus resulting total number of six mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions that can be specified based on the specified or given physical end restraints for the specific practical example of the cylindrical shell structure. And since the number of mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions, that is six numbers that can be prescribed for a cylindrical shell structure in general, including the six physical quantities just enumerated at the two boundaries of the cylindrical shell is greater or more than the number of unknown constants which are only two that is the two unknown constants of integration C0 and C1, one may conclude that the membrane solution is not unique simply because the number of mathematically admissible boundary conditions that can be prescribed in agreement with the specified or given physical end restraints of any practical example of a cylindrical shell structure are six in number that is six physical quantities for the two boundaries x equal to L and x equal to zero for the thin cylindrical shell while the number of unknown constants of integration that are to be solved are only two in number which are C0 and C1. Hence an important fundamental conclusion that can be derived based on the physical interpretations of the membrane solution is that the membrane solution as formulated by equations 1 to 4 is not unique. For sake of discussion, let us consider, for instance, a different set of boundary conditions, which are also mathematically admissible or valid for the two practical or the solved examples, that is example number one which is the cylindrical pressure vessel with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to uniform internal pressure and example number two which is cylindrical water tank with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic pressure thus constituting axisymmetric loading in case of both the 
practical assault examples one and two, considering a different set of boundary conditions, for instance, which are also mathematically admissible, and by different we mean set of boundary conditions that are different from the previously considered set of boundary conditions in the earlier slides, which are also mathematically valid or admissible, as they do not violate the specified or given end restraints constituted by the construction or configuration of the practical example. And a set of different boundary conditions, for example, number one, that is the cylindrical pressure vessel, that is also mathematically valid or admissible is that the actual displacement u at the boundary x equal to l is zero, as well as the actual displacement or the longitudinal displacement u at the boundary x equal to zero is also zero. It may be noted here that this set of boundary conditions is also mathematically valid or admissible as the boundary conditions are consistent with the specified or given end restraint. That is the thick liners at the boundaries x equal to zero and x equal to L, that is the top and the bottom end of the cylindrical pressure vessel that are provided by fabrication or construction. Substituting the alternative set of admissible or mathematically valid boundary conditions u at x equal to l equal to 0 and u at x equal to 0 equal to 0 into equation number 4, one can determine the unknown constant of integration c1. Substituting the value of the unknown constant of integration c0 into equation number four, back into equation number four results in the a simplified form of the membrane solution for the actual or longitudinal displacement u and substitution of the second boundary condition that is actual or longitudinal displacement u at x equal to l into equation number seven results in the value of the other unknown constant of integration, C naught. Hence, substituting the values of the unknown constants of integration, C naught and C one, thus calculated from the substitution of the mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions into the membrane solution results in the membrane solution for the radial displacement as given by this equation that is w the radial displacement at any coordinate x is equal to a square times p naught divided by e times t multiplied by 1 minus mu square where a is the radius of the thin cylindrical shell 
P0 is the uniform internal gas pressure, E is the modulus of elasticity of the material of construction, T is the thickness of the thin shell, and mu is the Poisson's ratio. Similar steps of simplification or similar methodology for the simplification of the membrane solution for the second solid example that is the practical example of the cylindrical water tank with the thin shell subjected to hydrostatic loading or axisymmetric loading by considering a different or alternative set of mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions such as the axial or longitudinal displacement at the boundary L equal to zero is specified as zero as well as the radial displacement at the boundary x equal to L is also specified as zero. Uh, an alternative or different set of boundary conditions that is mathematically valid and admissible since the set of boundary conditions does not violate the physical end restraint that is specified or given for the practical example which is the thick base slab at the lower boundary or the boundary x equal to L that is the bottom end of the cylindrical water tank. Substitution of the alternative set of mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions into equation number 10 in Roman numeral presented in the previous slides results in the determination of the unknown constant of integration C0 which when substituted into equation number 2 in Roman numeral also presented in the previous slides results in the determination of the membrane solution for the actual force nx that is the in plane or membrane actual force nx at any coordinate x as gamma w times a times l divided by mu where gamma w is the unit weight of water that is the stored liquid in the cylindrical water tank which in turn implies that nx, the in-plane actual or the in-plane membrane, in-plane or membrane actual force or longitudinal force nx at the boundary x equal to zero is also greater than zero and is equal to the constant gamma w a times l divided by mu as depicted by the membrane solution determined for the unknown internal in-plane or membrane actual force nx and circumscribed by the green rectangle. A non-zero or finite value of nx, that is the in-plane or membrane actual force at the other boundary or the top boundary x equal to zero is 
physically in, infeasible since the physical end restraint that is specified for the top boundary that is x equal to 0 consists of a light roof cover thus constituting a free end at the top or upper boundary x equal to 0. As a result, the physically admissible value of the in-plane or membrane axial force Nx at the top boundary x equal to 0, which is provided with a light roof cover, is only a zero value. In other words, due to the light roof cover that is provided at the top boundary x equal to zero of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tank, uh, non-zero or finite value of the in-plane or membrane actual force Nx at the boundary x equal to zero as predicted by the membrane solution of the in-plane or membrane actual force Nx circumscribed by the green rectangle is physically infeasible even though the membrane solution for the in-plane or membrane actual force Nx has been derived on the basis of a mathematically valid or admissible set of boundary conditions that themselves are consistent with the specified or given end restraints that are constituted by the physical end conditions of the cylindrical shell structure and the observation that the membrane solution for the in-plane axial force on the membrane axial force Nx at the other boundary x equal to zero is physically infeasible even though the membrane solution is derived by substituting a mathematically valid or admissible set of boundary conditions that are consistent with the specified or given end restraints. Further underlines the second conclusion listed in the present slide, that is, the membrane solution is not unique, as we have demonstrated mathematically in the present slide, that substitution of uh, different or alternative set of boundary conditions that are also mathematically admissible or mathematically valid results in a completely different membrane solution for either of the two practical or solved examples that is example one of the cylindrical pressure vessel and example two of the cylindrical water tank. 
continuing our discussion on the conclusions based on the physical interpretations of the membrane solution for the two practical or solid examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank obtained from the substitution of mathematically valid or mathematically admissible boundary conditions that are consistent with the specified or given end restraints provided for the practical example under consideration into the membrane solution that is specified or mathematically formulated by equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 as represented in one of the earlier slides. In case of the cylindrical pressure vessel, when we prescribe the in-plane or membrane axial displacement or longitudinal displacement u at the boundary L equal to zero as one of the mathematical boundary conditions, which is also notably mathematically valid and admissible, we get a non-zero value of the radial displacement W. That is a non-zero value of the membrane solution for the radial displacement W which is obtained or solved as a uniformly non-zero or finite value for the radial displacement at any coordinate x and given as a square p naught divided by et times 1 minus mu square for all coordinates x that is at all cross sections x all longitudinal coordinates x thus implying that the radial displacement w at the other boundary that is x equal to l of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel is also non-zero or finite and equal to the uniformly non-zero or finite value of the membrane solution for the radial displacement at any coordinate x. And therefore, the radial displacement W as predicted or depicted by the membrane solution thus derived from the substitution of a mathematically admissible or mathematically valid boundary condition into the mathematical equations for the membrane solution 1 to 4 presented in one of the earlier slides results in a non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement at each of the two boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell that is the boundary x equal to 0 and the boundary x equal to L in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel. 
Further, non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement W at both the top boundary or upper boundary x equal to 0 as well as the bottom or lower boundary x equal to L will therefore intuitively induce or give rise to out of plane shear forces due to the given physical end restraints for the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel that are constituted by the thick liners at the two boundaries x equal to 0 and x equal to L. Let us, for sake of discussion, denote these out-of-plane shear forces that would be induced due to the non-zero or finite values of the radial displacement W at the two boundaries x equal to L and x equal to zero of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel as x1 and x3 Further, the non-zero values, the finite values of the radial displacements W at x equal to 0 and x equal to L will also intuitively induce or generate out-of-plane bending moments due to the specified or given physical end restraints for the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel constituted by the thick liners which will obviously restrain the radial displacements W at either end each of the two boundaries, that is the upper boundary x equal to 0 and the lower boundary x equal to L, where the thick liners are provided by the fabrication or the construction of the cylindrical pressures. Let us denote these intuitive out of plane bending moments that are induced at the boundaries x equal to zero and x equal to L as x two and x four since at the moment these intuitive out of plane shear forces x1 and x3 and the uh, out of plane bending moments that are induced or generated due to the physical end restraint provided by the N-liners at the two boundaries x equal to 0 and x equal to L against the finite or non-zero values of the radial displacements W at the two boundaries are unknown 
does the notations x1 and x3 denoting the intuitive out of plane shear forces and the notations x2 and x4 denoting the intuitive out of plane bending moments that should be or rather will be induced by the non-zero or finite values of the radial displacements at the two boundaries x equal to zero and x equal to L by virtue of the membrane solution. are restrained or constrained by the specified or given physical end restraints comprising of the two thick liners provided at the boundaries x equal to L and x equal to zero in the cylindrical pressure vessel by construction of fabrication. Furthermore, the non-zero or finite values of the radial displacements W at the two boundaries x equal to zero and x equal to L inducing or giving rise to outer plane shear forces that are unknown at the moment, say x1 and x3, and out of plane bending moments that are also unknown at the moment, say x2 and x4, at the two boundaries x equal to 0 and x equal to L respectively, will cause bending of the shell. as one can intuitively visualize an outer plane shear force such as x1 or and x3 and outer plane bending movement such as x2 and x4 that are intuitively induced by the non-zero or finite values of the radial displacements W at the two boundaries x equal to 0 and x equal to L will intuitively cause bending of the shells that is the thin cylindrical shell at the boundaries of the shell in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel and this bending that is induced by the outer plane shear forces and outer plane bending moments induced due to the non-zero or finite values of the radial displacements W at the boundaries cannot be explained by membrane theory as one may recall that one of the fundamental assumption or premise of the membrane theory is that the external loads are resisted primarily by in-plane or membrane actions. In conclusion, therefore, 
based on the physical interpretations of the memory and solution that have been derived from the substitution of the mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions into the mathematical formulations for the memory and solution as summarized by equations 1 to 4 in one of the earlier slides The memory theory is not complete since the memory theory cannot explain the bending of the shell that will be caused by the outer plane shear forces x1 and x3 and outer plane bending moments say x2 and x4 that are intuitively induced or generated by the non-zero or finite values of the radial displacements W at the two boundaries x equal to zero and x equal to L of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel as obtained from the membrane solution. Similar conclusions can be derived based on the physical interpretations of the membrane solution, that is the solution of the in-plane or membrane actions in case of the cylindrical water tank with a thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic or axisymmetric loading. In this case, when we earlier prescribed the in-plane or membrane axial force in x at the boundary x equal to 0 as 0 and the in-plane or membrane axial displacement or longitudinal displacement u at the boundary x equal to l, that is the other boundary of the thin cylindrical shell as zero as the mathematically valid or admissible boundary conditions that are consistent with the specified or given physical end restraints at the respective boundaries. The membrane solution provided by equations 5 to 11 in Roman numerals presented in one of the earlier slides as the mathematical formulations of the membrane solution for the specific practical example or solid example of the cylindrical water tank with the thin cylindrical shell subjected to hydrostatic or axisymmetric loading predicts that the radial displacement W at any general coordinate x as derived in equation number 11 from the substitution of the mathematically valid and admissible boundary conditions into the membrane solution for a thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading summarized by equations 1 to 4 in one of the earlier slides was found to be or solved as W at any cross-section X or longitudinal coordinate X equal to comma w times a square times x divided by e times t where comma w is the unit weight of water, a is the radius of the cylindrical shell 
and E is the model of elasticity of the material of construction of the shell, T being the thickness of the thin shell, which predicts that the radial displacement W increases linearly from zero, that is the value of zero, at the top boundary, that is x equal to zero, that is mathematically a free end uh, is provided with free end conditions due to the light roof cover at the top of the cylindrical water tank to a maximum value of the radial displacement W at the bottom, that is the other or lower boundary, x equal to L of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical water tank. That is solved as comma w times a square times l divided by et, where l is the length or the height of the cylindrical shell. The finite non-zero value of the radial displacement w at the base of the cylindrical water tank that is at the boundary x equal to L of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical water tank will intuitively give rise to an unknown out of plane shear force, say x1, since the shear force that is intuitively induced at the base of the thin shell due to the non-zero value or finite value of the radial displacement at the base of the boundary x equal to L is unknown at the moment as well as an unknown outer plane bending moment, say x2, that is an unknown outer plane bending moment denoted as x2 with the notation x that is capital X signifying that the intuitively induced shear force x1 and the intuitively induced bending moment x2 at the base or the bottom boundary x equal to L, that is the lower boundary of the shell, are unknown at the present juncture. However, the unknown outer plane shear force x1 and the unknown out-of-plane bending moment x2 do definitely exist or are definitely induced since the physical end restraint that is specified or given 
for the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical water tank. constituted by the thick base slab physically restrains any radial displacement and thus intuitively any non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement W at the lower boundary or the base of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the practical example of the cylindrical water tank will induce an out of plane shear force denoted as X1 for sake of discussion as well as an outer plane bending moment x2 with the notation x capital x1 and capital x2 signifying that the intuitively induced outer plane shear forces x1 and x2 are unknown at the present juncture and as in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel one may conclude based on the physical interpretations of the membrane solution for the radial displacement resulting in a non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement at the lower boundary or the base of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tank that is provided by the physical that is provided with the physical end restraint of a thick base slab that the outer plane shear force x1 and the outer plane bending moment x2 that are intuitively induced will cause bending of the shell at the lower boundary that is the boundary x equal to L of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the practical example or solid example of the cylindrical water tank simply because non-zero a finite value of the radial displacement at the boundary mathematically described as x equal to L that is the lower boundary or the base of the shell is restrained against any radial displacement W due to the thick base slab provided at the base or the lower boundary x equal to L of the cylindrical water tank by construction or fabrication. Additionally, one may conclude that the physical behavior that is depicted by equation number 11 derived in one of the earlier slides as the membrane solution for the radial displacement W 
from the substitution of mathematically valid and admissible boundary conditions into the membrane solution. Summarized by equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 presented in one of the earlier slides is possible or feasible only if the base of the shell in case of the cylindrical water tank behaves like a roller since the membrane solution of the radial displacement derived as equation number 11 in Roman numerals from the substitution of mathematically valid and admissible boundary conditions into the membrane solution for thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading as summarized by equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 predicts uh, non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement W for all coordinates x except x equal to zero and the radial displacement W obtained as a function of the longitudinal coordinate x physically implies that the radial displacement w increases linearly with the radial with the longitudinal coordinate or the actual coordinate x from a zero value at the top or the upper boundary x equal to zero to a maximum value at the lower boundary x equal to l that is the base of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tank which is physically feasible only if the base of the shell behaves like a roller support. However, in reality, the base of the shell at the boundary x equal to L of the cylindrical water tank is fixed or restrained against any radial displacement due to the thick base slab that is provided as the physical end restraint at the boundary x equal to L of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the practical example of the cylindrical water tank. which is an interesting observation and results in additional physical interpretations or conclusions on the fundamental physical behavior that is predicted by the membrane solution derived mathematically in the form of equations 1 to 4 for thin cylindrical shells subjected to 
axisymmetric loading in general with the membrane solution presented by equations 1 to 4 in one of the earlier slides. Continuing our discussion on the conclusions and the physical interpretations based on the membrane solution of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading in case of the two practical examples of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the cylindrical water tank. The current slide presents figures or schematics illustrating the membrane response of the thin cylindrical shell in the two solved examples or practical examples considered in the present study that is the practical example of the cylindrical pressure vessel and the practical example of the cylindrical water tank as depicted by the membrane solution that was derived in the previous slides from the substitution of mathematically valid and mathematically admissible boundary conditions into the mathematical formulations representing the membrane solution of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading as summarized by equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 presented in one of the earlier slides. Specifically, the figure on the left hand side depicts the membrane response of the radial displacement W that is exhibited by the thin cylindrical shell in case of the solid example of the cylindrical pressure vessel as derived from the membrane solution of the radial displacement from the substitution of mathematically valid and admissible boundary conditions into the equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 representing the membrane solution or membrane response of thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading. On the other hand, the figure on the right hand side depicts the membrane response of the radial displacement W that is exhibited by the thin cylindrical shell in case of the solved example or the practical example of the cylindrical water tank as represented or predicted by the membrane solution of the radial displacement W derived from the substitution of mathematically valid and admissible boundary conditions into the membrane solution of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading as represented by 
equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 summarized in one of the earlier slides. As one can observe from the graphical representation or the visual depiction of the membrane response of the radial displacement W exhibited by the thin cylindrical shell in case of the practical example of the cylindrical pressure vessel the radial displacement W due to the membrane response that is the membrane displacement W exhibits a uniform non-zero or finite value equal to a square p naught divided by et times 1 minus nu square based on the membrane solution derived from the substitution of mathematically valid and admissible boundary conditions into the equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 summarizing the membrane solution for thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading in general as summarized in one of the earlier slides. The uniform non-zero or finite value of the membrane displacement that is the radial displacement W due to the membrane response will intuitively induce out of plane shear forces X1 and X3 at the two boundaries that is the lower boundary and the upper boundary of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel due to the physical end restraints that are provided by the thick liners that are specified for the cylindrical pressure vessel at the two boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell. Further, the, the uniform non-zero or finite value of the membrane radial displacement W due to the membrane response of the thin cylindrical shell should also intuitively induce or give rise to out of plane bending moments x2 and x4 at the lower and upper boundaries respectively of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel Again, due to the physical end restraints that are provided by the thick liners specified or given for the cylindrical pressure vessel at the lower and upper boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel. Since these out-of-plane shear forces X1 and X3 that are 
generated at the lower and upper boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel as well as the outer plane bending moments x2 and x4 that are also generated or induced at the lower and upper boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel due to the specified or given physical end restraints provided by the thick liners at the two boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell. are unknown in value <coughs> at the present juncture that is the outer plane shear forces x1 and x3 induced by the membrane radial displacement w and the outer plane bending moments x2 and x4 that are also induced by the non-zero or finite value of the radial membrane displacement w are unknown at the present juncture, the notation that has been selected to represent these shear forces and bending moments acting out of the plane of the shell is capital X with the subscripts 1, 2, 3 and 4 signifying that the unknown outer plane force X1 and the unknown outer plane shear force X3 are the outer plane shear forces induced at the lower and upper boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel while the subscripts or the notation X2 and X4 represents the out of plane bending moments that are induced at the lower and upper boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel. One can intuitively visualize from the figure depicting the radial membrane displacement or the membrane response of the radial displacement W that assumes a uniform non-zero or finite value over the height of the shell that the specified physical end restraints provided by the thick liners at the two ends or the two boundaries that is both the lower and the upper boundary will restrain 
the radial displacements in other words the radial displacement w due to the membrane response that is found to be a uniform non-zero or finite quantity over the height of the shell will be restrained by the specified physical end restraints provided by the thick liners at the lower and upper boundary of the thin cylindrical shell and hence the physical end restraints provided by the thick liners at the lower and upper boundary of the thin cylindrical shell will induce unknown outer plane shear forces x1 and x3 and unknown outer plane bending moments x2 and x4 at the lower and upper boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell respectively. One can also intuitively visualize from the figure depicting the membrane response of the radial displacement that these out-of-plane shear forces x1 and x3 that will be induced at the lower and upper boundaries of the shell as well as the outer plane bending moments x2 and x4 that are also generated at the lower and upper boundaries respectively of the thin cylindrical shell will cause bending of the shell as depicted by the deflection profile of the thin shell due to the membrane radial displacements and the bending of the shell that is produced by the unknown outer plane shear forces x1 and x3 as well as the unknown outer plane bending moments x2 and x4 at the lower and upper boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell respectively cannot be explained by the membrane theory since one may recall that the basic premise of the membrane theory is that the external loads are resisted by membrane actions only. It is also worthwhile to note here that the uniform non-zero or finite value of the membrane radial displacement that is the radial displacement W due to the membrane response of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel is physically infeasible due to the physical end restraints that are provided for the thin cylindrical shell by the thick liners at the two ends of the lower and upper boundary of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel and it is 
obvious that the specified or given physical end restraints provided by the thick liners at the lower and upper boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell will restrain the radial membrane displacement or the membrane radial displacement W due to the membrane response since the lower and upper boundaries of the thin, thin cylindrical shell are fixed or restrained against both radial displacement as well as rotation due to the physical end restraints that are provided by the thick liners given in the cylindrical pressure vessel at the two ends or the two boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell. Similar conclusions or physical interpretations can be derived uh, intuitively visualized from the figure on the right hand side that visually depicts the radial displacement due to the membrane response of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the second practical example or solid example of the cylindrical water tank as depicted by the deflection profile illustrated for the thin cylindrical shell in, in the cylindrical water tank due to the membrane radial displacement W that is the radial displacement W due to the membrane response of the thin cylindrical shell the radial displacement W due to the membrane response also termed as the membrane radial displacement increases linearly from a zero value at the top boundary or the upper boundary of the shell to a maximum value at the bottom or lower boundary or the base of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tank as predicted by the membrane solution that was derived by substitution of mathematically valid and admissible boundary conditions into the membrane solution for thin cylindrical shells subjected to axisymmetric loading summarized by equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 in one of the earlier slides. Call that the membrane solution of the radial displacement W was derived as gamma w a square x divided by e t based on the substitution of mathematically valid and admissible boundary conditions into the equations 1, 2, 3 and 4 summarizing the membrane solution of thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading as presented in one of the earlier slides. 
And hence, the membrane solution of the radial displacement W or the radial displacement W due to the membrane response of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tank will be illustrative or plotted as depicted by the figure on the right hand side which exhibits the deflection profile due to the membrane displacement W of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the second solid example or practical example of the cylindrical water tank. Based on the membrane solution or the membrane response of the radial displacement exhibited by the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tank, one can intuitively visualize that the radial displacement W due to the membrane response increases from a zero value at the top or the upper boundary of the shell linearly to a maximum value equal to comma W A square times the height of the shell divided by ET at the lower boundary of the shell as displayed in the figure. The maximum radial displacement due to the membrane response or membrane solution of the thin cylindrical shell will be comma W A square times L divided by ET where L is the length or the height of the shell which is physically feasible only if the base or the lower boundary of the shell behaves like a roller support. Similarly, in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel, a uniform non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement W due to the membrane response or membrane solution that was found as A square P naught divided by ET times 1 minus mu square is physically feasible only if the two boundaries, that is the lower and upper boundaries both of the thin cylindrical shell in the cylindrical pressure vessel behave like roller supports. However, in reality, the upper and lower boundaries, that is the two ends of the thin cylindrical shell, in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel, are both restrained against radial displacement by the specified physical end restraints provided by the thick liners given at both the ends or lower and upper boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical pressure. On the other hand, in reality, the lower boundary of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tank, that is the base of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the practical example of the cylindrical water tank is restrained against radial displacement 
by the specified physical and restraint provided by the thick base slab that is given for the cylindrical water tank. As a result of the specified physical end restraint that is provided by the thick base slab given at the lower boundary or the base of the thin cylindrical shell in case of the cylindrical water tank, the radial displacement W due to the membrane response or membrane solution of the thin cylindrical shell will be fixed or restrained by the specified physical end restraint provided by the thick base slab at the lower boundary of the cylindrical water tank. Thus, giving rise to an outer plane shear force x1 an outer plane bending moment x2 in case of the cylindrical water tank at the lower boundary or the base of the thin cylindrical shell One can intuitively visualize that the, the non-zero or finite value of the radial displacement due to the membrane response or membrane solution of the thin cylindrical shell at the base or the lower boundary of the shell in case of the cylindrical water tank will induce unknown shear force say x1 and an unknown bending moment say x2 both of which act out of the plane of the shell and since the unknown outer plane shear force x1 and unknown outer plane bending moment x2 will cause bending of the shell as depicted by the deflection profile of the shell in the figure on the right hand side for the cylindrical water tank and this bending of the shell that will be caused by the unknown out of plane shear force x1 and the unknown out of plane bending moment x2 induced by the specified or given physical end restraint provided by the thick base slab at the lower boundary or the base of the thin cylindrical shell will cause or result in bending of the shell which cannot be explained by membrane theory as one may recall that the fundamental assumption or idealization of bending th of membrane theory is that the 
External loads are resisted primarily by membrane actions and the out-of-plane effects such as out-of-plane shear forces and bending moments are negligible in case of a thin shell due to the negligible flexural rigidity or bending, negligible bending stiffness of the thin shell. Hence, one may conclude based on the physical interpretations of the membrane response of the thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading in the case of the two practical or solved examples that is practical example of cylindrical pressure vessel as well as the practical example of cylindrical water tank that is visually depicted or illustrated in the left hand side and the right hand side figures on the current slide that membrane theory is not complete and thus the membrane solution is also not com complete since membrane theory alone cannot account for or explain the unknown out of plane shear forces say x1 and x3 if applicable and are unknown out of plane bending moment say x2 and x4 if applicable or where applicable that are induced by the non-zero or finite values of the radial membrane displacement, that is the radial displacement due to the membrane response or membrane solution, which obviously are physically infeasible as the radial Displacement due to the membrane response or membrane solution of the thin cylindrical shell will be restrained against will be restrained in case of the specified physical end restraint provided by the thick base slab in case of the cylindrical water tank and the thick liner in case of the cylindrical pressure vessel. And since the boundaries of the shell, that is the uh, lower or upper boundary or both boundaries of the thin cylindrical shell in a practical example of a thin cylindrical shell subjected to axisymmetric loading may be fixed against radial displacement or restrained which may therefore be restrained the intuitive unknown out of plane shear forces x1 and x3 wherever applicable and the intuitive out of plane bending moments x2 and x4 wherever applicable will cause bending of the shell at the relevant boundary of the shell and this bending cannot be explained by membrane theory alone. 